Mm -hmm. Yeah, get some B-roll. <laughs> so I corral, I corral, I think we decided that we're not going to spend money on that anymore. The Organic Living Club, and I'd like to thank Barclays over here for hosting the meeting. Yay! And despite the fact that the nursery is, you know, kind of burned up, We've got some people out here that haven't been out here before, and so they know where to look for them. That's less important. Uh, our mission is to educate our members and the public about living an organic, sustainable, and natural lifestyle. I also have to make my disclaimer, as I always do. Information and literature provided or products recommended are not intended for the purpose of diagnosing, treating, or curing, or preventing any disease. Advice and suggestions offered here tonight are the opinions of the individual speaking and do not constitute legal or medical advice. The mention of any product or the common or trade name does not constitute an endorsement. Do not discontinue medical care without first consulting with a qualified health care provider. Now that I've said that, we're also here under the Constitution of the United States of America that provides for free speech. Yeah. So if I say something that offends someone, Please take it that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. <laughs> and, and if you would, uh, go to our, our website, www.organiclivingclub.org. <laughs> or brochures. We have some of this work. And sign up. Sign up for the mulch board. And we will be sending our notices out on mulch board. If you do not have a sign-up sheet tonight, if you do, if you don't have email, you don't have web access, uh, please give me your number and I will call you personally. Yeah. So that, that will be your so we provide our email on the web, on that website? Yeah. Okay. okay. It, it tells you how to do it. Just click okay. on it. That's right. Nice. Yeah. Good day. Now, I, I listened to a whole bunch of topics tonight, and I want to see what most people are interested in, so we can start with that one first. Um, who's interested in learning about trees planted in the summer? Okay. Who's, who's interested in oak wilt? Who's interested in drought prevention? I think that's what we'll start with. Move to Michigan. Actually, I'm going to start a tape report. I've got a few notes that I need to make, and I want to make sure that they're important when I do that part. And I may not be able to hear this either, so I may have to go to the web. <laughs> Look it up on me. Okay, we're really talking about not prevention, but avoidance. Uh, what is what is drought avoidance or drought prevention? Uh, it's making every drop of rain that falls on your property stay there as long as it can and be utilized to the best of its ability. So, first of all, how do we get rain to, to uh, settle on our property? Yes. Well, that's one of the ways. That's another way. I'm going to talk about some of those, but the thing that we need to, to uh, 
realize first is that the rain doesn't come from the sky up we're in the heck of the situation. And right now we've had such a prolonged drought that even those that have taken every step that they could take, everything that I'm going to talk about tonight, are still suffering from suffer this drought. But, but how can you survive? I was talking with my relatives the other day who were ranchers and farmers. A lot of them have had a lot of problems. A lot of them have gone in and plowed in and disc up, sold cattle or done anything. They asked me how my dad's place looked. I said, it looks great. It actually got grass on it. They said, really? Is it all dry? They said, no. No, the cows are eating, their cows are fat. We had a bunch of little calves this year. They're all eating, they're growing, they're looking good. And they all shook their head and go, how did you do that? And I said, back in 2006, when we had a drought, I sold off all my cattle except for a few mommy cows. What happened in 2007? It rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. We were all talking about how tired we were of the rain. <laughs> well, if there's not a whole lot of cattle to eat all the grass, what happens to the grass? It grows and it grows and it grows. We had grass up literally this tall. You know, three feet, four feet tall. And that's, that's some of the improved grasses. Well, that's not even natives. The natives were up like this. So, so when you get a lot of grass, when the rain falls, where is it going to stay? It's going to stay in the ground or underneath that grass. So that's what happened. All the water that fell continued to be absorbed. Now, from the United States Department of Agriculture, uh, they did a uh, soil conservation service, excuse me, natural resource conservation service is what's called. They did a test along the Ohio River. They had a native prairie, and they had a native or a virgin forest, and they had a plowed corn. They got an 11-inch rain. And they started looking at how much runoff was going to happen on that, after that 11-inch rain. Now, which which area absorbed the most water? Grass. Grass. Prairie. And the second most?